drum tuning. So I've had some questions on drum tuning, how to tune the drums. Uh, sometimes people see me tuning the drums and they see this. Done. See what I just did? I just tuned one lug and I'm done. So there's a, there's a lot of misconceptions about drum tuning. And um, one of them is that you need to tune one leg here, and then skip and tune one leg here, and one leg here. But what it really comes down to is that tuning the drums is a very personal thing. Um, and for me, you know that sometimes I want to get actual notes out of the drums. Although we're not going to really talk about that right now, uh, I'm just going to try to get what I consider to be a good sound out of the drums. So uh, the main thing to keep in mind, and I think this is the thing that um, that a lot of people don't know and don't realize, is that the top head and the bottom head should be tuned to the s about the same um, tension. Uh, if they are not tuned to the same tension, you're going to get a, a choked sound. And so, you know, again, it doesn't not really have to be exactly the same tension, but a, a, approximately the same tension, pretty close. Um, that's how you're going to get a sound that resonates, which is what I like. I like to have a tone that resonates. So, for example, if I... Here's a... You know, I, I like the sound... Of but if I tune the, the bottom head really high, see how choked it sounds? Now, if I tune the top head as high as that, as the bottom head, it would sound less choked, but it would still be probably too high for me. So it would probably be too high for the drum itself. But you see how it's resonating at least again. We tune everything up. So sometimes if you are come to a new set and you haven't touched it and you see that, you know, uh, that you don't like the way that something sounds and you tune the top head too about the pitch that you want it, but it still sounds choked, check the bottom head and make sure the bottom head is around the same um, tension as the top head, okay? So, let's take the bottom head down now. But the top head, is still pretty high. So now you have the top head that's that's tighter than the bottom head. And then you see that that's a choked sound too. But if you take at that point if you take the top head down approximately to where the bottom head is. And by the way, a lot of times I go by the feeling of how, of the pressure of the lugs, of the tightness. Um, because that's, you know, a lot of resonance there, right? And you can even tune it up a little bit. And now there's less resonance because now the bottom one is very, very low. So this is where it's naturally sitting. Something like that. You hear that? So if you if you would want it higher, and I would want it higher, I would tune up the, the top and the bottom head. And what I was saying about the, the lugs being about the same tension, sometimes the these uh, these lugs can get worn, and so you won't be able to tell exactly how much tension is on um, you know each lug. And so that can be pretty confusing, actually, if that's the case. But if the drum is in pretty good condition, if it's not warped, if the head is not warped as well, then you should be able to feel about how, you know, how much tension is in each lug, and then you can match it to another lug. 
So if I hear that, that's pretty close. That sounds pretty good to me. It's pretty close to what I like, but I would like it to tune it down a hair. my drums to sound and again this doesn't have to do with getting an exact pitch but I like to have the frequency of a drum be as kind of condensed and specific as possible so I don't like a lot of different um, frequencies a lot of overlying frequencies I like to kind of pinpoint the frequency that I'm going for and so that means when you hit the drum you want to hear essentially a note you know you one main note and then maybe maybe there's some overtones but um, but you want it as close to you know at one note as you can. Uh, the um, the same goes for the bass drum, and I'll show you uh, one other little trick that I use for the bass drum here. Um, again, you want about the same tension in the front as the back. And that's a pretty good sound right there. But I, I've also set it up. You see what I've done here? These are paper towels. And I've taped two paper towels to the front head. And this actually is great at soaking up what I, what I would call extra frequencies. Um, and so it's, it soaks up these kind of like uh, these uh, stray flying frequencies and it really kind of pinpoints the sound. Uh, kind of points the sound to that pitch. Um, so that's a, you can't really do that with the other drums so much. Um, the snare is kind of the, you know, the same way. Uh, the front and the, the back head uh, or the bottom head should be about the same. Um, the one thing about the snare that you have to deal with uh, that you don't in the other drums are the snares and how tight the snares are going to be. You need to be able to decide that as well. If I took off the snares, that's a pretty high, that's a pretty high and pretty tight sound. Sounds pretty good. So we put the snares on, it sounds like that. That to me sounds really good. But what if I tightened up the snares and made them what I think is too tight, which is often how I find snare drums. You know, if somebody plays them before me, that's too tight for me. It seems it's uh, the snares are too tight on the drum. And then if I loosen it, and let's say I take it down so that they're too loose, it would sound like this. Then I would know, oh, I need to tighten it. So I'm tightening the snares right now. And I really just, I just tighten them. In, I take, you know, where they're too loose, and then I just tighten them a little bit up from that. I don't crank the snares. So that's how I like the drums to sound. Not so much that one. We'll work on that and it will be ready by next week. Thanks for listening. See ya. Um, yeah, cymbals you can't, you, once, you, once you actually get them, like there's kind of limited stuff that you can do. Um, you, you, you can change it, like if you hammered it or something, um, you can put tape on it, that could change the cymbals too.